Are demons active in today's world, and can can they possess a human soul? That's the question today, and let's find out, and let's go bold. I'm Scott Patton. Thank you all for joining us today for the Go Bold Pop podcast please consider hitting that like and subscribe and share button on our youtube channel we would really really appreciate it now the question today are are demons active in today's world and can they possess a human soul that's the question this is what we're investigating today and that is our question several weeks ago during one of our wednesday night youth missions which i was i love our wednesday nights and when i get to pastor and and uh, preach to our kids especially, you know, our teenagers, and they always have, uh, it, we, we make it a little bit different than church, but we're always preaching out of the Bible, but it's more of a, um, where we go back and forth, and we I let them ask, uh, ask questions during the service, and, and we talk about things, but one of the teenagers asked me if demons are still active, and they can physically possess people, okay, like you saw in biblical times, and, and um, I thought it was a very thoughtful question, so for the next several weeks, what I did with the kids, uh, we explored in the Bible and Scripture uh, what God's Word actually said, and and uh, and we explored this question with our youth group, and I decided to, to make a podcast out of it. But let me just say, our teens and our preteens and our, our even our small children are really exposed to a lot of horrible realities in the spiritual domain. And uh, and the spiritual warfare that that we that Satan employs and that that it's just it is just I will tell you guys the spiritual warfare that we're seeing in the United States today is off the charts, and I'm really frankly amazed that the, this the lack of discussion on um, on on this on this whole idea of how demons influence our society and how they they influence the church and and I'm just really uh, I'm surprised at the lack of discussion and the lack of training in churches now you remember uh, last year we had that um, that that we did a podcast on little Nas X and a lot of the kids were talking to me about little Nas X at the time and and his whole um, you know with the Nike 666 shoes and his and the and the video that he did I think that got like 25 million views where where he was having sex with the devil and he was going down a um, a uh, uh, almost like a stripper pole from heaven to hell and and because the main, but if you call this out as 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 um, demons being possessed, here's what's going to happen: the mainstream media is going to call you crazy. They're going to call you exorcist. They're going to call you uh, uh, radicals and all that kind of stuff. And you'll probably even get that from from other pastors. And 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 let me just say, what we saw in the last year with not only Little Nas X, but you also saw it at the Travis Scott concert, where eight people were killed during a rampage. And now. Many of our children are exposed to this activity, and you can't tell me that demons aren't touching this and they're not having their hands in this. Now, you guys know that Little Nas X has 8 million followers, and you know that uh, one of the horrible tragedies um, that we see across the United States are some of the things that influence our children. But I came across something when I was doing this, uh, putting this together for our kids to kind of look um, uh, uh, to answer that basic question about demons and how they possess people. And I saw this video that I thought was fascinating. It was down our southern border. Now, you guys know that human trafficking uh, that we're seeing across our southern border today and really, you know, across the United States is just absolutely horrible. And um, this is a this is really a global crisis that is just beyond belief. And and I can't believe that we're letting that happen here in the United States. And I don't think we're doing near enough to to combat it. But anyway, the people that that traffic in many cases, these these young teenage girls and these children um, will be sold inside the United States as sex slaves. And it's just so awful, guys. But. Several weeks ago, the U.S. Border Patrol captured a lady that was, I guess you'd describe her as a coyote. Uh, she was a human trafficker. She was a, uh, a coyote for the cartels where she would steal these little girls and these little children and get them across the border, and then she would sell them uh, as sex slaves. Now, but something fascinating happened when the Border Patrol agents uh, arrested her and they were putting her in their van. And you're going to see an example of what I think today is a demon-possessed person. Now, I want you to watch this uh, video. Okay. 
Put your feet in. Ma'am, put your feet in so we can close the doors. Okay. So you're going to close the door. You stay right there before we move. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. Hey, calm down. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. Back up. Back up. Back up. Okay, so you can see this poor lady is possessed. I'm just playing the simple, guys. She's not normal, and I don't think in any way that she's faking it. Now, I was proud of our kids when we when we talked about this one of the several of the kids actually uh wanted to to pray for her and we did we we prayed for that lady that the that that god would the holy spirit would take the demons out of this lady now now work with me here for just for a second now hear me out when we look into god's word and we look in and and i don't think we're doing enough to counter demons in uh, in our ministries in our basic tactical ministries that we have on the ground all the time we're always trying to fight brokenness which is awesome uh we're we're sharing the gospel we're doing those things to help children to help widows but I really don't think, as pastors in the United States, we're doing enough to combat this, this whole idea to counter demons in our ministries, at, especially at the tactical level of this spiritual war that we're at. Now, because Satan can convince so many people that any pastor that speaks on this is fringe and a fundamentalist, uh, a lot of pastors, I think, have, have, have walked away from this whole idea of, of uh, fighting demons in their tactical parts of their ministry. But I want you to know, here's, here was, here's, so here's what happens. Pastors are afraid to, to discuss the topic because they're afraid they, they're going to be branded. So what, does the, what, so what does the Bible say? What does the Bible tell us, the disciples of Jesus and pastors and shepherds of church, what to do at the tactical level of this spiritual war when we're, when we're talking about demons? Well, let's go back to what Jesus did. That's the first question we've got to ask. The first thing. Jesus, the, here's what Jesus did. Right after John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit, and you remember the white dove that descended up to heaven, um, and, and, and you remember that whole episode in the Bible, Jesus has now this tremendous power of the Holy Spirit. He's armed with him. The, the king of the universe is now armed with the, the, the whole power, the full power of the true and God. Now, remember what he does. The first thing that Jesus does after he gets baptized, what does he do? He goes to the wilderness. The Holy Spirit leads him to the wilderness to take on who? Satan. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Satan for 40 days, 40 nights. We did a whole podcast on that about a year ago. But then... So, so that's the first thing that Jesus does when he's armed with this, this tremendous power of the Holy Spirit. He goes and he takes on Satan. Now, the second thing he does, which is fascinating, he then goes, starts recruiting you know, he, he the the army of the Lord. He 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 he, he recruits. Uh, he starts recruiting the disciples. Okay, and uh, he starts making them fishers of men. And then one of this, but but here's what people don't understand. One of the very first acts that Jesus did uh, when after he 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 to start his ministry at the tactical level that Jesus was fighting at at the time, he starts casting out demons. I want you to look what it says there in the book of Mark. You see that 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 picture with with Jesus, his hand on this this man to cast these demons out. And I want you to look at him. And I want to read God's word now. Now there was a man uh, in the synagogue with unclean spirits, and he cried out, saying, "Let us alone! What have we done with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God." But Jesus rebuked him, and he said, Be quiet and come out of him. That would be Matthew. Well, I'm sorry, that's Mark 1, 23 through 25. Now, here's what we need to understand. Did you catch how terrified the demons are of Jesus? I'm telling you, folks, they still are. Okay? Demons and Satan himself know when they're in the presence of the powerful, true, and sovereign, powerful God, which is Jesus Christ. This is something that we cannot take lightly, folks, when we are Christians. And you see, 
Jesus with his disciples, every time he's healing, you remember he's healing sickness, he's, he's, hearing, uh, he, he's making the blind see, he's making the, the paralytic walk, okay? Remember what he's doing here. He's casting out also, he's casting out demons during this whole time he's doing this. So when Jesus was on his ministry on earth, the demons... Uh, the, the demons are demonic, but they are not Satan, but they're, they're, they're a part of Satan's army. So Jesus is taking them on. But I want to take you to the book of Matthew, and I want to show you what Jesus gives to you, uh, really the power that Jesus gives us when we accept him for you to practically defeat demons as a church body and as individuals. Why don't you look what it says here in Matthew uh, chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, and I read God's word. When an unclean spirit goes out of man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And then he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. This is very important here, verse 45. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and then they enter and dwell there, and the last state of man is worse than the first. So shall it be with this wicked generation. You see that, Matthew 12, 43, 45. Now, here's what I want you to understand here. The context of this verse and the Pharisees are rebelling, okay? If you look at the biblical context of this verse, the Pharisees are rebelling against Jesus, okay? Now, if you, you, you got your Bible and you're following along with this, these are red letters in your Bibles, okay? These are red letters, so they're not, they're not, uh, they're not Fred letters, they're not John letters. These are red letters, and that means Jesus is talking here. So Jesus is rebuking the Pharisees on their haughty and their snarky attitude, and they think that they're so good by keeping a clean house, okay, remember works, okay, that, that they don't need Jesus, okay, this is what they're getting, and because they have a clean house, it can keep demons out, and this is what Jesus is rebuking them. Jesus points out you can have a clean house all day and a clean church all day, but that's not going to stop the powers of demons occupying your church house. But as individuals, he's also making the point here because without Jesus, okay, the demons are going to chew you up and your family, and they're going to chew your children up as well. I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. You see, he, he, the context of this verse, he's talking about the church, but he's also talking about the house, your body, which you live in, your temple, okay? Now, so here's what I'm telling you, folks. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, demons can come on you and destroy you and your family and your children, root and branch, period. They can. And here's the thing, folks. You could fake the funk, but, but it's not going to work against the demons and the devil. They won't. Because here's what I want you to understand. You might as well. Uh, Jesus, I know, Jesus is not physically there to cast the demons out. But here's what I want you to understand. At this time in Christianity, when Jesus was doing this, we hadn't experienced Pentecost yet. Okay, He was still on earth with the disciples. And the, the Holy Spirit was, but, but, but the Holy Spirit was dwelling permanently in Jesus, but he was not dwelling yet in the disciples. Now, but here's some great news. When Jesus has that same power afforded to you, when the Holy Spirit des descends upon you, when you are saved, this is what I want you to understand. And that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to take you to the book of John, chapter 15. And these are, again, these are in red letters. And this is before Jesus was, was letting the disciples know that he was going to be de-crucified and he was going to have to, to go away from him in this earthly body. Now, here's what you're going to see here. But when the helper comes, who shall I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who precedes the Father? He will testify of me. Now, when Jesus talks about the helper here in in John 15, 26, he's referring to the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God. This, this, this powerful, powerful uh, part of the true in God. Now, the same Holy Spirit has the power to make demons flee. I want you to let that sink in. 
And before the resurrected Jesus descended into heaven, he also gave him another verse, which you don't see on the screen, but in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and this is a very, very famous verse. Uh, but you, are, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my what? Uh, my witness to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the, all the ends of the earth. But I want you to stay in the book of Acts just here for a second. And I want you to look at something here. Let's stay in the book of Acts. Now, you will see how the Apostle Paul used the power of the Holy Spirit to make demons flee. Yes, the Apostle Paul. Now, the Apostle Paul was not Jesus. He was an apostle. And he was very, very powerful because of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what I want you to set the conditions here in Acts chapter 19. And I would just recommend if you get a chance just to read through Acts 19 several times because it's fascinating. I even did a sermon on it. I think it was like, I don't know, uh, probably about two or three months ago. But Paul was preaching in Ephesus. Now, just so you guys know, Ephesus was was a dumpster fire. It was a lot like the United States is today. It was There was sexual perversion. There was bestiality. There was homosexuality. There was sorcerers. There was witchcraft. There was all these types of demon-possessed people uh, that were all over the, the place. Now, like Jesus' ministry, Paul it took a group of his Christian followers and they started doing, they were healing people just like Jesus did. And the other thing, they were started casting out demons. Now, and they were doing this at epic proportions. You could see this in the book of, uh, in the book of Acts. They were kicking the demons' teeth in through the power of the Holy Spirit, and especially Paul. He was exercising demons, okay? And this was stirring the whole place up. They all had the salvation of the Holy Spirit, the apostle Paul did and his followers, and they were preaching the gospel, and they had this tremendous power with them because now, this is after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is now on the earth, and he is living in those who are in Jesus Christ. Now, it, let me just say this, guys. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do not get this power from the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you do not have the power to take on demons. And this is what I talked about with our kids. The demons will chew you up and they will spit you out. Now, we're going to go pick up some more here in, 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 with Paul in uh, Acts uh, chapter 19. Now, to set the stage here, a lot of people were seeing what Paul and his followers were doing with these feats. And you see that deal. Yeah. But I want you to... I want you to Set the conditions here. So then there were people that were going to try to imitate Paul and his disciples because some of this, they, they kind of viewed this as, as what Paul was doing was some people interpreted at this time uh, as sorcerers and magic, and they thought they could just be a part of it and act uh, kind of fake the funk. So what you had then, if you look here in verse 13, Acts 19, verse 13, then some errant Jewish exorcists took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Now, I want to, I just want to stop here for a second. These, these exorcists, okay, these Jewish exorcists, let me tell you about them, okay? First of all, they were not saved. They were not Christian, all right? They were, they were, I would, I would, I would compare them to, you know, like these evangelical elites that that uh, bopping with their, you know, hopping around with their thousand dollar suits on and their breast mats and their nose stuck into the air, and they were like these, you know, they wanted fog on the stage and they wanted all these things so they could they could make their money and they could live in their big houses and all these things and they wanted to 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 show the whole world that they had this power too, this power also to 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 exercise demons. And they were going to put on a show, and they were going to show these evil spirits, to, and they're going to they're going to push these out of these uh, these all these those all those nasty people. We're going to exercise you. So you hear what they said? They said we're going to exercise you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. So what happened is these cool cats that are not Christians are going to put on a show for the crowd, but these clowns could not lead somebody to Christ to save their lives. They were false preachers, and they had no trace of the Holy Spirit, okay? So they had the sheer audacity to invoke the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches, to tell these evil spirits and the demons to leave these people in the name of Jesus. You know what I tell those people? And we have a lot of them today, folks. Mock God at your own peril. Watch what happens. 
I want you to look at verse 15 now in the book of Acts, chapter, chapter 19. It says this, And the evil spirit answered, and he said, very important, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Hmm. You know, guys, sometimes the Bible is absolutely fascinating. These fake, these false prophets think there's some kind of game show here. They think it's some kind of freak show. And the demon possessed man who is talking now for the man, the demon says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? The demon now is laughing his you-know-what off, okay? The demon that you really, and the demon's like, do you really believe that you fake preachers can come out here? Come in here. Come into this house, and you're going to exercise me, and you don't have one iota of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, and you think you can come in here and take me on? Really? Really? The demon's like, come on, Clyde. Really? You're going to come in here using Jesus' name like this is some kind of voodoo magic tricks that you're going to, you know what the demon's telling me? He said, you are way in over your head, buddy. You're way in over your head. You're going to come in here and you're going to manufacture some magical arts nonsense and you're going to do that on me? Huh. Let me just see. So I want you to look at what happens in verse 16. Acts 19, verse 16. The man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. Now, let me just stop there for a second. Now, the, in, according to the Bible, there were eight of these altogether. There were seven of these and, and, and a, uh, these exorcist priests, okay? Uh, there were seven of them, and there were uh, uh, men, and there was their priests. With their priests, there was eight, okay? So let's go back there. This one demon possessed man, then overpowered them, prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This is what the Bible says. So one man, one man with the evil spirits beat the living tar out of seven sons of the, and the chief priest. He ripped their $1,000 suits on. He broke their fancy sunglasses. He punched their breath mist down their throats. And then he threw their naked butts out in the street. One against eight. Uh, fair fight, right? I'm going to tell you something. And the, the, the whole uh, huge crowd saw this. Now, let me just say, guys. Are demons, let's go back to our question. And I want you to understand this. This is what I talked about with the youth kids. Are demons active today in today's world? Can they possess a human soul? Yes and yes. In fact, I would say that demons are as active as any time today in the history of the world. I really do believe that in the history of the world. But can they still possess a human soul? That's the other question. And I think we've We've, we've overwhelmingly answered that question as yesterday. But there's one exception. He cannot, they cannot do those. They cannot uh, occupy a human soul for those who are in Christ. There's not a chance. You see, when you are saved by the God's grace, the Holy Spirit of God is inside you. A demon cannot occupy that space of your soul. Because your soul belongs to the Holy Spirit. Remember what it says in the book of Isaiah. You are what? You're marked. You know, we always we always get like we always get fixated on that mark of the beast, the 666. But once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get the mark of the Holy Spirit of God. He lives in you forever. And that will never change. That will never change. You have him. Can he tempt you? Yes. Can he disrupt you? Yes. Can he cause problems in your life? Can demons do that? Yes. But they can never take your soul and they can never occupy you. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is how we go bold. God bless you and go bold.